Hey everybody, welcome yeah. to the Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and we are continuing our My Five series, and we are talking to photographers and educators and photo professionals about five images that have had some impact on their development and growth as artists. And today we have George Nobeci. Uh, did I, I, I think I messed up that pronunciation. <laughs> no, you, you, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I Americanize like every pronunciation that I do here. So George is a photographer and he is an educator. He is the creative director for Nobeci Creative and uh, the uh, Karazawa Photo Fest. Is that pronunciation correct? Yeah, you, you, yeah. That, that's a tough one, but you got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so before photography, George was an equity trader and manager, and he was in the world of business. And now he is focused with his photography on quiet depictions of landscapes and the people who live in them. And George, I have to say, I looked uh, look at your website before this and just some just some amazing images, just really powerful stuff. So um, I have to say you're um, the Nobeci Creative, the workshops that you do, you just have a phenomenal roster of instructors who come with you. I mean, you have Sam Abel and Greg Gorman and Iberian X Perillo and Keith Carter and just, I mean, and that's that's just a, like a small list of people. You you really have managed to get some uh, some amazing people to uh, participate in your workshops as instructors, really kudos to that. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, that's our uh, greatest privilege and greatest honor is to work with uh, those amazing photographers, like you mentioned, uh, some others as well. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that's actually part of my whole journey, a little bit about what I'll talk about today as well as how I met these wonderful photographers uh, who've become friends and mentors and so on, and uh, and the collaborators when it comes to uh, these workshops and uh, teaching and so on, especially in this special country uh, that, where I'm fortunate to live as well, which is Japan. Well, so we asked you to come on and talk about five images. What did you go through in the process of trying to figure out what those five images would be? Uh, well, um, you know, honestly, it was uh, fairly uh, intuitive. I had a good idea of at least what four of them would be. Um, and then the fifth was uh, sort of, uh, I'll obviously explain that, but a lot of it had to do with my origins, how I went from finance to um, into photography and all, all that that entailed. And those each of those images uh, provided some connection or inspiration for me, uh, whether from childhood or from adulthood. Well, I have to say I'm um, I'm I'm fascinated by your story, so I'm looking forward to these five images. So, George, you had um, five images, and we're going to start with this first image from Brett Erickson, and tell us why this is here and why this means something to you. Okay, so um, 2014, uh, I was in New York, as you mentioned, uh, an equity trader at the time, and had a, about a 12-year run uh, in Tokyo, New York, doing that. And I was um, rather tired out of the whole process and the stress of it all. Um, it was not something I originally wanted to go into, but due to family circumstances, it got sort of thrust into that world. And uh, I woke up and suddenly I was in my mid thirties and where did the time go? Um, they call it the golden handcuffs for a reason. Um, it's, it's, it's a good salary, but also very, very stressful, and difficult life. And uh, I was fed up with going to work in the dark and leaving work in the dark, like never seeing the light of day. And, and I took this workshop and I got hooked and uh, asked the instructor, his name was Alan Winslow, uh, where can I go? Uh, to learn a little bit more. And he suggested, well, you could either go to main media workshops or the Santa Fe photographic workshops. And I thought about that and said, well, I've been to Maine before, like Bar Harbor and Acadia and all that, but I've never been to Santa Fe. I wonder what's out there. So I go and I hop on the website, um, you know, summer 2014, and I look and I see this image of two wild horses uh, running across the Great Plains um, towards the storm. And I just thought, oh, well, uh, that's something that's of interest to me. Um, my background, I grew up in Tokyo. I was born in Tokyo, uh, Canadian father, Japanese mother. Um, I'd always loved my favorite series of books uh, as a kid, or English language books anyway, was uh, The Black Stallion by uh, Walter Farley. Mm -hmm. And uh, I read all the books. I, have, I still have most of them. And, uh, you know, I, I always wanted to be Alec Ramsey and be, you know, marooned on a desert island with a, with a horse and all of that. Well, we moved to Canada when I was 11, uh, to Alberta, of course, so it was horse country. And uh, first thing I wanted to do was get a horse. And my dad said, well, 
how about before we get you a horse, you take some riding lessons first and see if you really like it because it's kind of expensive <laughs> and <laughs> uh, you know naive 11 year old yeah I go and uh, I, I get riding lessons turns out I'm really allergic to horses oh no <laughs> <laughs> so there went that dream right uh, but I'd carry that with me like just wanting to be free like that and I think it was very symbolic of what I what I had been experiencing about wanting to break free from uh, the world of finance and everything and I saw the this image and I just thought wow that's that's everything I want to learn. It's also black and white. I know nothing about it. Uh, I want to be free like that. And so what did I do? I mean, that class was starting like, I think a day later or something, but oh. I called them up. They had one spot left. So I hopped on the plane out to Albuquerque, then drove up to Santa Fe and I joined the class just in time. And uh, there I met my first, uh, you know, mentor, uh, Brett Erickson, and who happened to be, um, uh, you know, a, 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 an ardent student of uh, Sam Abel's work. And so you sort of one thing led to another, but at the end of the workshop, Brett directed me to Sam's work and said, you need to take his workshop next because I think you'd really click. Uh, so that's why this image uh, still resonates with me. I look at it every day, in fact. Uh, I have one at home and um, I, I, it, just, it just reminds me uh, of why I started in the first place. And we have an expression in Japanese. It says, shoshin uh, wo wasureru na. That means never forget your first heart. It's not your first like thought or inspiration perhaps that, that caused you to do something, but your first emotional response to something. And, mm. uh, and that's very important for um, you know, maintaining your enthusiasm you know, when, the, when the grind gets to be a lot and everything is to remember why you did this in the first place. And so this photograph reminds me of that. What a great story. And that takes us to Sam Abel, their number two. Yeah, so I, you know, I caught the photography bug for sure, and uh, I went back to New York, and I, 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 you know, I packed up all my things, I put them in storage, and I decided that I was leaving finance behind. I signed up for a workshop with Sam. You know, for a lot of people, I think who watch this and follow this, and probably have seen your wonderful episode with him, um, is a is a great mentor and inspirational teacher, um, and great, uh, great, I'm great fortunate man. Fortunate enough yeah. to. Yes, to, to call him a dear friend. Mm. And um, we connected. We connected uh, over many things, but um, both quiet photography as well as uh, love of Japan. But I come back to this image uh, all the time because of uh, so much that he taught me, but especially in that first workshop, uh, the idea of connecting a still life to a landscape, which he often talks about. But just the little small details, like waiting for that final piece, that lace curtain to blow in the wind so the hemline at the bottom was all the way in. And how, you know, when you look at the photograph, you don't think about that because it just feels right. And mm -hmm. uh, so quiet, is so powerful um, and bright, you know. And uh, so I've always tried to keep that in mind as, as I photograph as well. Um, and it's certainly given me a lot of inspiration uh, in my life. Your third image is that of yeah. a book. Tell us about this one, sir. Yes. So um, there are, you know, quite a few uh, Japanese authors, um, maybe some in the, especially in contemporary, uh, you know, sort of uh, authorship, uh, Murakami Haruki and so on, and others who've been translated and well-loved in, in America. Uh, but not so much. Uh, one of the greats, I think, is uh, Miyazawa Kenji. And um, Kenji was born um, in uh, Iwate Prefecture, sort of uh, Northeast Japan. Um, he himself was a humble Buddhist um, and, uh, you know, lived with two cups of brown rice, uh, one of his famous poems, just about living um, a, a modest life. But the books he wrote were full of this, what you would say as magical realism. Hmm. Um, and one of these is this one, uh, Ginga Tetsudo no Yoru, which translates to A Night on the Galactic Railroad. And it's a story about a boy coming by and there's a there's a train that comes and it picks people up and it takes them off into the Milky Way. It's just an incredible story. And um, so many of these uh, books, they, 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 when you start reading them, they feel real, like it could be you. And the next thing you know, you're, you, you know, you're hurtling across the, the night sky in a steam locomotive train. 
And this is very special to me. This is the actual copy of the book that I have still. And I always remember this image uh, of the railroad and the boy. Um, it's, it's actually cut out uh, by a famous shadow artist, uh, 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 an artist by the name of uh, Fujishiro. But um, just the image, the sort of uh, imagination also of being you know, uh, out in the railroad and out in space and so on. And that's inspired so much of my work is finding where are those places in the world? Where are those places in Japan that, that I'd imagined from these children's novels? And so it sprung a whole body of work of mine um, and it inspired the series that was my second uh, top 50 series was all about trying to find these places in the world. They're not manipulated, mm. not set up. It doesn't need to be steam locomotives, but what could I find in the contemporary world that was that I feel inspired and resembles uh, that which Miyazawa uh, wrote about and, uh, and so on. So that's why this one is here. Eugene Smith with your fourth image. Yes, um, I would say this is the image that uh, a, a number of my mentors, including Sam talks about how it's, it's very well it's near impossible to make the perfect image there's always something that we want to change and so on and um and i had also had another wonderful teacher uh arno rafael minkinen uh early on in my uh you know explorations of photography and uh, he talked about um some images that uh jacques henri lartigue made and how they were metaphorical and talked about uh changing uh speed and time and so on and then I came upon this image a few years ago. Uh, there was a large retrospective of uh, Gene Smith's work here in Japan. Um, I'd seen this image in passing before, but for the first time I, I took a close look at a, at a print. And I know he has many more uh, famous works, obviously, Minamata uh, series from here in Japan or, or mm -hmm. Country Doctor and so on and so forth. And, uh, war images and uh, and then this is from the the series in Wales of of the uh, miners and so on. What I see in this image is not only a, a multi layered composition that has uh, so many elements, whether it's the 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 sort of smoke and the dust that we see and the hills uh, and then the the you know sort of the uniform style of housing on the right um, and everything else that's happening in this image. But then if we dig a little deeper and think metaphorically, I think that this uh, is a picture that tells an entire story about a changing era uh, in one image. Um, so with that, if I look at this image, I see the railroad and you, you, know, you see those tracks and in the distance you see the person. But mm -hmm. here in the foreground, you have a horse, uh, a horse-drawn carriage crossing those tracks into and uh, moving away from the image. Um, the horse and the carriage are moving out. They're being replaced by what's coming behind them. The car, the automobile mm. uh, is entering the picture. Um, it's also, if you look at the two the figures here, it says Jones and Son. And it tells a story about these sort of family run businesses and everything that are being replaced. Um, all of those, you know, it just captures this change of an era in one image. It just it just floors me every time I look at it, uh, that you could have such a complex multi layered image that tells a metaphorical story as well. So it's not just compositionally or um, you know, incredible, but it just, it goes much deeper than that. And so this is always an inspiration because I say, well, if there is one perfect image or if I could ever make one image that told so much, um, this would be the one to aspire to. Your fifth and final image. Talk about this one. Well, um, you know, um, with Hokusai, there's obviously a lot of different uh, images that we could uh, talk about. Um, you know, obviously the great wave off Kanagawa is, is yep. iconic and known the world over, uh, but the entire series of the 36 views of Mount Fuji, of which there are 46, <laughs> actually, there are 10 bonus ones. And uh, <laughs> recently I had the opportunity uh, at the Nag uh, Nagano Prefectural Museum, about an hour away from where I live, uh, to go see all 46 uh, woodblock prints uh, on display. And it was incredible. I'm a mostly... Um, you know, occasionally some other formats, but a 35 millimeter photographer. And the world of uh, Hokusai and other woodblock artists is uh, quintessentially 35 millimeter. If you look at it, um, we're not using, talking about zoom lenses here uh, or so on. We're not also going ultra wide. Um, everything feels just so in a ratio of three to two, uh, full frame, um, and then layered. And it begins with a back layer. Sam 
Abel that we, you know, we talked about him. He always talks about the back layer. Hokusai is always the back layer, right? Uh, Mount Fuji is the back layer always. It, it is, um, you know, the, the uniting factor, uh, but it is not the main and only thing. Uh, everything else is layered from the back through. And um, through, throughout the time of my photographs, I always like to take a step back and observe those who are observing that, you know, the, the main subject and so on. And so this, this platform image has always stuck with me for a long time. The fact that he, he, he did step back and, you know, the, the people are in various different states. There's a baby, you know, holding onto a mother. There's, there's a younger, uh, younger man, uh, like hanging off the railing. There are some people who have receding hairlines and so on. And we get to see all of that. I mean, uh, it's real life, it's everyday life, and yet everybody is there uh, sort of enjoying the view. And it's just an absolutely classic image. George, this is just such a fascinating conversation. It's such a pleasure to meet you and talk to you and um, hear about not only your images, but how those images brought you to where you are. I'm so thank you so much for joining us here on The Great House. Thank you very much for having me. It's a great honor to be uh, on the program with uh, so many people that I, I love and admire. And uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to be, but a little chapter to, to your series uh, for which I commend you on. I think it's a terrific uh, series. I've enjoyed watching a few of them and I, and I look forward to when I get back home uh, from rural Japan uh, to watching a few more. So thank you very much. Well, it's been an honor for me to be able to talk to not only you, but to all the other people who have appeared on The Crit House. And now I have become a huge fan of, of yours as well. And for those of you who are interested in uh, participating in The Crit House, you have an opportunity to do so by, if you wish, on Instagram, take your five images, use the hashtag my five and post it uh, on Instagram and then tag us at The Crit House. And perhaps you'll be on us as well. George Nabachi, thank you so much for joining us on The Crit House. And thank you all for watching The Crit House.